We're about to check out a video of Dr. Bart Ehrman being caught out by Dr. James White in their debate about the veracity of the New Testament. It's really interesting, and it's not often Bart actually gets caught out like this, so let's check it out. Um, On the Unbelievable Radio program in London, you discuss the length of time that exists between the writing of Paul's letter to the Galatians and the first extant copy, that being 150 years. Uh, You describe this time period as enormous. That's a quote. Could you tell us what term you would use to describe the time period between, say, the original writings of Suetonius or Tacitus or Pliny and their first extant manuscript copies? Very enormous. Sorry, ginormous would be a good one? Ginormous. Ginormous, okay. Uh, I mean, ginormous doesn't cover it. Uh, (laughs) The New Testament, we have much earlier uh, attestation than for any other book from antiquity. What you can't do is then say, well, then you can't trust any book from antiquity. Okay, yes, right. That's right. So, uh, that's right. So, you see, Bart actually knows where this is going and he knows he's been caught out. Let's keep watching. So, it would be correct to, to write a book called Misquoting Suetonius? Absolutely. Scholars do this. And scholars uh, write books all the time about how you don't know the word, the, about what Plato actually wrote or what Homer wrote or Suetonius or Tacitus, Euripides. This is just what scholars do. Of course, you, of course, there are scads of books on just these topics. And so when you, you cite them in your works, you will, you will say according to the best sources and, and will, will question the reliability of Suetonius or Gospel there, of Thomas, there whatever no, else might There's be. no, there's no scholar who's an expert in Suetonius or Cicero or the Gospel of Thomas who would tell you that we absolutely know what these texts originally said. So when, they, when you say know what these texts originally said, but they will believe that we have a sufficiently clear knowledge to quote Suetonius, you quote Suetonius, don't you? Yes, of course, I quote the manuscript tradition of Suetonius. I mean, it's just understood among scholars what you're quoting. And so you say in your books, I'm not really quoting Suetonius, I'm just, uh, this isn't really what he said? I'm saying that we don't have the original text for any writing from the ancient world. The New Testament is no different. Just as you can't establish the original text of the New Testament because you don't have sufficient evidence, you can't establish the original text of Suetonius because you don't have original evidence. For some of these, some of these authors, uh, I mean, the, the manuscript tradition is pathetic. I mean, for some very important works from antiquity, we have one manuscript that's a palimpsest. And so, uh, I mean, yes, absolutely, we have exactly the same problem. And when you say that, uh, well, nobody goes on about the Gospel of Thomas, absolutely wrong. Scholars of the Gospel of Thomas talk about this all the time. I mean, this is a major issue of scholarship. Uh, I'm sorry, I... I didn't say that they don't discuss such things, sir, but anyway. Now, you may not have caught it, but the essence of the argument is this. Dr. Bart Ehrman is saying that the time from when the Gospels were written to when we actually have our first uh, pieces of the manuscript, like, for instance, in John, there is a fragmented piece which has been dated 200 to 220 uh, uh, AD, and we know that uh, maybe John wrote it uh, somewhere to, uh, towards the end of the first century. So the gap is around maybe a potentially 150 years, right? 100 to 150 years to actually when John wrote it to when we actually have the first copies of the manuscript. Now, this is his argument. His argument is that we can't rely upon the Gospels because we have copies of copies of copies of copies, and we don't know what the original autograph said. Here's the issue. And Dr. James White brilliantly brings this out into his argument and makes him look somewhat contradictory or somewhat of a hypocrite because this is the issue. The ancient historians, the historians of antiquity, whether they be Josephus or Suetonius, the documents, uh, the manuscript edition that we actually have, right, between when they wrote their documents to when we actually have the manuscripts is even the gap is even wider than what the gospels are sometimes hundreds of years up to a thousand dr bart Ehrman actually says it's ginormous that's why he laughs he, he kind of knows where this is going because if he's using suetonius if he's using josephus in order to disprove the veracity of the new testament documents he looks like a hypocrite now you'll see in my previous video which i'll link down the bottom i'll put a little photo of it here that he uses uh josephus in order to discredit the gospel of luke about when Quirinius was actually governor that's the irony you see the bible is such a, a well-attested document it is the standard by which we actually measure if something's historically accurate or true so when he goes off and uses historians in order to try and disprove the Bible, and the argument is that we can't trust the Bible because of the gap 
between when they wrote it to when we actually have the manuscripts, well, you can't use those historians from antiquity in order to do that. That's the irony of the situation. And he got caught out. So it's a great work by Dr. James White. Um, if you want to follow him, all of his stuff, it's actually from uh, Apologia Studios. I really, I'll, re I'll leave a link in the uh, in the description below. But this is this is the type of work that we actually need to start broadcasting because these people, these New Testament skeptics, are really coming out in full force to try and discredit the actual Bible. And when they do do that, they leave themselves open to their own logic and their own argumentation being used against them. And that is the basis of presuppositional apologetics. And that is uh, Dr. Dr. White is a master at it and he really uh, he dismantled uh, Dr. Ehrman in this debate. I recommend that you watch it.